a journey to one africa I was patient listening to people talking on this uh, meetings and uh, one issue that was me, I just want to uh, articulate that issue and say our views, at least how we see the situation from, from, from our perspective. When people talk about Russia, Ukraine, I say there is no Russia and Ukraine war at all. There is no Russia and Ukraine conflict. This is war declared by NATO on Russia. The war declared by NATO on Russia is not only for Russia, it's for dominating the whole world. It's for hegemony. This is an agenda developed after the end of the Cold War. They came up with this fantasy about containing, containing Russia, containing Russia, containing any power, small, big, that challenge them technologically, economically, socially, culturally. They have to contain everybody. This defunct ideology, it's a defunct ideology. I say Russia did not do its preparation to face this declared war. Even though Russia was aware about the dynamics of what was going on, NATO NATO is defunct. NATO does not exist. NATO is under intensive care. EU does not exist. EU is under intensive care. Now, 30 years ago, when they decided to contain Russia, they felt that was the major threat for them. China was not considered a threat at the time. Now they know. They missed the point. They couldn't contain Russia. They would never contain Russia. Ukraine is a sacrifice. Ukraine is, is a price they have to pay. They will not pay it on their own. They will provide billions and billions, even trillions, to continue this war. And now we need to have the narrative straight. This is not war between Russia and Ukraine. This is declared war against Russia because Russia was the major threat at the time. Now. They don't, they, they can't dominate the whole world. They have to defeat Russia so that they hegemonize everything. No one should be their equal technologically, militarily they have to be superior, economically they have to control everything, grab every resource here and there, technology under their control. That dream is no more. Now the fighting going in Ukraine, it's their battleground. That battleground is a sacrifice for them. And we need to put this straight on the record. When a big meeting like this, Russia, <coughs> Africa is held, people will have to come to a consensus. This is not war between Russia and Ukraine to me. And anyone who has a different explanation will have to tell me. This is war declared on Russia, but declared war for hegemony. The last 30 years we have seen the details of the mechanics of this declared war. This last event is the final phase to me. It will end sometime. NATO will not get out of intensive care. EU will not get out of intensive care. These are systems that are crumbling. It's only a matter of time. And the whole world will have to be prepared not to defend Russia, but stand with Russia so that this hegemonistic idea will not prevail at any point in Russian history. How do we design a plan? How do we fail this one without any further cause? They are printing money. They are not manufacturing anything at all. It's printing money. And this has been one of their weapons globally, the monetary system, the global monetary system controlled by dollar and euro has been used 
functions here, functions there, functions there, grabbing this uh, account, grabbing that account, has been one of their tools. This is not going to continue indefinitely. And we need uh, uh, a new financial architecture globally, not controlled by you, not controlled by, by, by the dollar, not controlled by, by other currencies. To me, this failure of the, 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 the attempt to contain Russia <coughs> will immediately move to the east. Containing China is their next agenda. They may be playing a very deceptive tactic on trying to tell everyone, oh no, we have uh, to work with China, we have to do this and that. Their miscalculation about China has proved to be wrong. They felt probably they have the technology, they have everything, the Chinese can only copy, they will never equal them. So they will contain Russia, but make friendship with China and continue taking advantage of that so that containing Russia will be easier for them to do. Now China is out of control. Containing China from Taiwan, from India, from Japan, from South Korea, from Australia. How do they do it? How will they do it? That challenge is coming next. But first they need to deal with Russia. How are they going to deal with Russia and then next move to China? How can they deal with everybody? How do they contain us? <laughs> Imagine this tiny Eritrea is being contained by them. We are being punished with their sanctions every time. We have to be punished because we are not bowing. We are not bound to their conditionality. We are a very small threat. We are not even a threat to them. But they have to contain us. <clears throat> sanctions, 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 conflict here, conflict there. Now, I think we need to strategize. And I say, Russia will have to lead this strategy. Russia will have to design a plan on facing this declared war. Not only on Russia, but it's a global war. And everybody should come and join Russia on this strategy. The sooner the better, the easier way we can control this hegemonistic uh, strategy and frustrate that strategy, we give peace. Development will come. Nobody is going to bother us. Nobody is going to, 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 to bully everybody. Sanction, sanction, bully, bully. Defamation, demonize, psychological warfare, sanctions. We need a strategy, an alternative strategy for this hegemonistic uh, declaration of war. And every event, every event, bilateral, multilateral, will have to adopt this strategy. And that's why I said uh, during my intervention, Russia should design a strategy. It's not because Russia will have to do everything. We can make our contributions. It's a matter of ideas. How do we face this hegemonistic strategy? So that we can implement bilateral programs, technology, industrialization, agriculture, energy, water management, services, tourism, life, at, at, at all. How do we do that? Now, and we have to take this into a historical context. This is a continuation of the classical slavery. After slavery came colonialism. Slavery was exterminating populations, exterminating nine million in the Congo, exterminating the Red Indians in North America, in Canada, exterminating, exterminating indigenous population and grabbing their land controlling. And when they control land, they have to take slaves from Africa for their cotton plantation in the United States. That was slavery, continues, continues to be slavery as is. And then industrialization came. When industrialization comes up, it's a matter of grabbing, 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 grabbing other resources, and a continuation of slavery under a different form. Colonialism came. They had to colonize land so that they grab land, they control labor, they, 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 they enslave everybody. Neocolonialism was there. The Cold War, <coughs> Russia was the hope for the people of the world when, when the Soviet Union was there. Unfortunately, leaders in the Soviet Union made their mistakes to 
see the collapse of the Soviet Union, which was a historic tragedy, as you at one point uh, mentioned. That was a historic strategy. In the course of his, the history of humanity, that was a catastrophe. And that was one of the reasons that encouraged people like Fukuyama, Huntington, to design their strategy of hegemony. Because the Soviet Union collapsed, the Soviet Union disintegrated them, they felt they can control the world for the coming 50 years, 100 years, without anyone challenging them. And that was when this hegemonistic fantasia was uh, developed. Hegemonized, hegemonized, hegemonized. We have seen what they have done the last 30 years. It's a continuation of the same ideology of slavery. Slavery, colonialism, no colonialism, then hegemony. The world will have to get out of this state of affair. We are at a crossroads. We believe we are in a transition to a new world order. How do we design a new world order? How can we possibly strategize? How do we mobilize resources? How do we make people aware everywhere that this threat is there for them? And they get out of this so that they can enjoy their liberty, their freedom, their development without this hegemonistic idea. So I think this issue will have to be exhaustively addressed and we need to come up with concrete plans. We will be making our modest contribution, but we have uh, the idea that this, say, the Russia-Africa partnership is one part of the bigger global partnership that will have to be developed. Russia will have to take the lead because Russia has been targeted and is still targeted. They might dream of using the war in Ukraine now to weaken Russia and probably dream about the same event happening. The collapse of Russia will be a big advantage for them. It's a dream. They are now spending trillions and trillions by printing money to run the show in Ukraine, this will have to end uh, at one point in time. And we need to look beyond that. Our bilateral partnership is based on our understanding on this historic mission of Russia. Russia has a historic mission to play on behalf of everybody in the world. I can say who is the leader of this show, Mr. Vladimir Putin is the leader of the show because of time, because of the, the challenge that we have. And Russia should take them. I'm not flattering anyone. I'm not uh, doing any favor to you. I say this is a global challenge and we have to this global challenge by uh, I mean, identifying the role of each and every one of us in the whole story. Economic programs, energy, water, infrastructure, Name it. Not the, the easiest thing one can ever imagine. We'll have uh, a strategy. We'll define the goals and objectives. Once we have a strategy put in place, we'll have detailed plans on each and every sector, each and every industry. We'll mobilize resources for implementing those programs. And we will see that implementing those programs will change the life of everybody in Africa, Asia, Latin America, even Europe and in the United States. So, our detailed plans for sectoral programs is ready. On each and every sector, we have our own strategic plan. Since 2012, we have designed details of each and every architecture and uh, uh, infrastructure program: roads, ports, airports, railway, ropeways energy programs, water preservation and water management programs, irrigation, introducing technologies, our human resource development strategy has been there. We discussed it yesterday with uh, one of your ministers. We have designed, we have at least agreed on the details on how we will go over this because developing our human resource is a priority for us. There could be other resources, oil, gas, minerals, whatever. But our human resources, our human capital, 
We need to invest on that and we can rely on the Russian Federation for developing our capacity to implement developmental programs by guaranteeing the qualified human resource that we need to develop. The details are there. Do we have the money? We'll try to mobilize every single penny. If we can't mobilize this resource, then we'll have come and say to our partners in the Russian Federation, these are our plans. If you have an idea or an opinion, alternatives, we would like to listen. Mobilizing resources is a shared responsibility and we can mobilize our own resources from whatever is available. Mining, agriculture, manufacturing, we can do that. Thank you for your patience. But this war <laughs> will have to be clearly defined as a declared war on the part of NATO and its allies. It's been going on for the last 30 years. It will continue for some time but we'll stop it somehow. And the Russian Federation will have to take the brunt on that issue. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You're right.